Oh, Ali. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to hear. You have not seen your film for 20 years, you said. So I'd like to just begin before we get to some questions. What was this like for you tonight? I enjoyed it very much. You know, I've spent, I mean, I'm the age that she was. I'm the age now that she was when we made the movie. So I've spent the last two days trying to remember her sister's name. And I never did, and now I saw Hattie, and I, and I remembered, you know? Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed it very much. Nice, it was almost like it my, was my first contact with, with the film, to see it again. Oh, amazing. Uh, well, there is a, a question uh, for you here from Susan, and she asks you, this is a question for Allie, what stayed with you after spending time with Grandma Frisbee? Anything you carried onto into your own life? Yes, that's a really good question for me. Thank you. I actually grew up in public housing where all the houses are alike. You go in your apartment, then you go next door, the same thing. You go up the street, the same thing. She built those houses like jewels each one different. And I learned from her about how to live in a bottle glass house and love it because I always yearned to have, to be diff to have a different house than the person next door. And there she was with all of her little jewel houses. I love those houses. And in my mind and in my memory today, they're just as glittering and just as jewel-like as they were when we were there. Thank you for that question. Oh, uh, Ali, uh, we used as a big quotation on our wall for our third, our fourth exhibition, I think it was, uh, The uh, Treasures of the Soul, Who is Rich? Uh, we had uh, Grandma's quote that you gave me. She said, anybody can do something with a million dollars, but it takes something, you know, somebody with something to make something out of nothing, you know, and, and you see how much she was ripped off, even though everything, her dolls, the guns in the, th everything she got from the dumb by taking time and just, did you see how she picks up a, a, a painting when it's framed and she throws it away? You know, you know like uh, just her values, you communicated, you and Irving communicated so perfectly. I love uh, the juxtaposition of her, of her sister who took quite a different path with her little finger up and playing her card clubs and games. <laughs> <laughs> and when she's gumming her, her chicken in the morning, uh, yes. you know, we like, and when she said, oh, are you eating that for breakfast? You're like, this time of day? And she goes, well, what difference does it make? You know, there, there's such liberty to, to her, yet you also conveyed um, her sense of humor and impishness, despite the fact that she had more than her share of, of, of uh, such uh, hardship. To be married at 15 to a man who she didn't know, uh, at, who was 52, and in the 20 years they were together before he passed, to have seven children, uh, and, and then to have to bury so many, uh, you know, and, and bury men, you know, her, so many of her lovers and, you know, and, and everything. Uh, really, I, it's, it is for me the most perfect film. I think it was her humor that brought her as far as, as it did. You know, she was funny. She laughed a lot. She was very happy to see us. She had a good time with us. She hadn't seen Hattie for a long time because they were now so old and they couldn't really make the trip back and forth. So we went and picked her up and brought her and created the tea party. And they had a, such a good time seeing one another that day. So. Was there anything else in this film that didn't make the cut that you wish did? No, we cut very small parts of things. So that uh, the, <laughs> the scene where she uh, talks about the cop catching her and she doesn't have a license, that was the most fun thing to cut because she was so forgetful that she, she couldn't remember a whole sentence. So Irving was in back of the pickup, you couldn't see him, but every once in a while, his head would come up through the, the window on the other side and he would feed her her lines because she would stop in the middle and she couldn't remember and then she'd start over. 
So we had a lot of fun cutting that. Uh, and you know, it's so smooth. You think she tells the story just like that, but not all the interruptions of, I can't remember what was it I said and all that. We, we used that uncut version when we were teaching, editing. You know, oh. how to edit a piece where <laughs> your, your person doesn't know what they're saying. <laughs> can't remember things like that and it's very smooth so that was the most fun of the editing putting that piece together dear Ali we have two more questions one comes from Mark who says Ali what got you interested in the arts I started writing poetry as a little girl my mother was a storyteller in fact she she was the kind of storyteller that scares her kids to death you know, all the stories were Bluebeard's wife being murdered and <laughs> I heard all those things before I went to kindergarten and although I had nightmares and they scared me uh, they're addicting and you can't get away once you once you're with a storyteller and she feeds it to you every day you can't get away from the idea of story and now I believe that story is all there is you know to life you live your life and suddenly it's behind you but story is still there Ellie, you know, we did a show called What Makes Us Smile. And, you know, so many people love Halloween. And uh, they like, uh, if you see little kids, they would sense if somebody was really a kind of a predator. But if you notice you, how many children love when you play monster, you go, Rawr, and they run away. And then they come back and say, oh, play monster more. And, yeah. uh, and so I was interested in why and why people like roller coasters and being scared within a safe boundary, not you know a really somebody who means you harm or a dangerous situation. And it turns out that the blood chemistry of laughter is exactly like when we are scared in a horror movie or you know like halloween mask or whatever it's the same chemistry as is when we laugh and are enjoying something only when it's safe scariness but isn't that interesting so uh, you know interesting my mother was the safe barrier and she was also the teller of horrid stories so she was both in one person so we uh, were to, to those stories. And now uh, I'm a storyteller. Um, it, you know, uh, we have a, a link, I, uh, I think, to the effort to restore, um, to restore Bottle Village. There was money after an earthquake, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago or so that was allocated from the federal government and a local politician refused to accept it into his district, even though it would have given jobs to people to help restore it. But now there's a sincere effort and I know we have that, that link. Um, but why your film is even to have it in her own words, why she did something and to see it when it was still such a, such a, a, a an an amazement, you know. Uh, we have um, another quote. We have a quote from Carol, a question from Carol. What did Grandma Prisby think of your film? You know, I don't know if she saw it. Um, I don't think she saw it because she had the stroke very shortly after we finished filming. And then she was in a nursing home and then she died. And I don't think she saw the film. But I think that it wouldn't have been as important to her because it was finished as it was the making of it because she loved that part of art. She was a maker too. She was a creator, a putter together of things. So that's what she did as her part or as her role in making the film. And after that, you know, it was finished. So who knows? I wanted to see if there's any other uh, questions that are coming through and if, if not, um, I want to say I cannot, um, if you look up all of the films that have come from Ali Light, uh, actually to see Rachel's Daughters, right now we have the Secret Life of Earth show, which continues into, it's been extended into uh, the end or close to the end of January 2021 for sure, and maybe even longer. But uh, the, the incidence of breast cancer and how you did it almost is, how was it that it was more or less an inherited uh, propensity towards that illness and now the environmental causes, you know, why it's called Rachel's Daughters, uh, it, 
makes it mean that even if there's nothing in the genetics of your family, how much breast cancer there is. And the way you tackled it as uh, uh, really like a detective story from, from the women themselves is brilliant. So Rachel's Daughters, everybody, and also Dialogues with Mad Women, which is a very personal film uh, for Ali. And Ali, uh, if I don't have any, oh, I have, there's a question. Uh, can you please tell us about the soundtrack track, uh, uh, for this? It's just fantastic. Yes, the, the, sa uh, the music was composed by Tucky Bailey. And the, the music that you hear in the beginning is really, I watched it being recorded. She filled bottles with different levels of water and she blew across the top of the bottles and we recorded it. So the bottles made the music. Uh, there were other instruments used, but uh, there was a lot of bottle music in this film. Uh, wow. And I love it because it fits exactly. Um, and we didn't do, uh, we could never afford to do Foley. Foley is when you take your film to the lab afterwards and they put special effects in. And we could never afford that, so we did our own. So when you see grandma getting out of the car and you hear the squeaking sounds, it's me jumping on the fender of my VW Bug in the driveway at home and after midnight so there'd be no other traffic sounds. And then we recorded that and put them in and they just, they dropped right in, you know. So a lot of the music and sounds were recorded afterwards, of course. The music was always recorded afterwards, but the sounds we, we made new from what we had at home. Uh -oh. Uh, so another question is, uh, can you, from CJ, can you please tell us about your most recent film that won all sorts of awards again? I would love to. It's my first film made after Irving's death, made without him. And um, I wrote the script, after he died, I wrote scripts about grief and desire in old age because I'm the one who can do that because I'm an old woman and I had just lost my partner. And this is the first script of those four scripts that I wrote. It's about a young uh, African-American man with uh, PTSD who, who drives around with an older woman, 79-year-old woman, who has uh, dementia. It's just beginning to get dementia. So she can't remember and he can't forget. And they bond on, over that. And it's all evening, three hours spent in a car driving around uh, he takes the money that she gave him for fixing her flat tire. He buys some weed. He rolls a little cigarette. He asks her if she wants to smoke. She says, I don't smoke. So he says, can I? And she says, yes. And then she gets a high, contact high. <laughs> and then they sing and they have such a good time. And you know, it's a, it's a film that scares people in the beginning because they think, what is he going to do to her? What does she what's gonna to happen to him because he's in a car with a white woman. He could get hurt, she could get hurt, she could get robbed. They, all of the prejudice and the racism that people do have in them comes out in those fears. And then they find out these two bond and they really end up loving one another. Uh, and it's a 36 minutes short. I would love it if you showed it someday. And we would love that. Uh, Ali, can you tell us the name of the film? Yes, it's called Any Wednesday. Any Wednesday. Yes. That's right. I have seen it and I sure loved it too. So let me see if there, Becca, do you know if there are any other questions um, that have come through? Um, I just wanted to share one more question um, from sure. Jody Willie, since it's her birthday. Um, did you know Tressa very long before filming her, Allie? And then when did she pass away? We met her on the first day we drove down there. Wow. So we met her at the time we filmed her and we did that interview right away where she sings, where she sings uh, the song about her, her uh, waist was grease and all that, you know. <laughs> and then, um, we used the other song she sang at the end of the film. So everything we got the first hour or so in her sit down interview, which we then spread throughout the film. Mm. And then she died, um, I think we made the film in mid, 70s and every all five films were finished by 1980 so she died someplace in between those five years oh ali uh, now that we have zoom and you know how to use it we really hope to do many things but again thank you for the tremendous gift of 
the entire series of on visionary artists. I think they are jewels within jewels within jewels. So thank well, you. thank you, and thanks to that big unseen audience out there that just <laughs> I, makes me so happy. <laughs> yes, Allie, we had over 250 people watching your film tonight. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, well, will we post this, Becca? Do you know whether this will ever be something they can watch? or? Um, so we just recorded the Q&A. We will definitely post that. And I think Helen's going to talk with Allie and see if we can get um, the film on YouTube. It's your movie now. I gave <laughs> All the movies to you guys. Do what you want with them. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you both so much. Thank you, Allie, so much for joining us. And thank you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone. We hope to see you in person sometime soon. <laughs> and happy birthday, Jody. Happy birthday, Jody. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. everyone. Bye.